ever since I saw somebody with a projector showing in a movie on their RV, on the side of their RV, I thought it would be so cool to have one. This company contacted me an email and offered me a projector for if I did a review. And so I was like, oh, heck yeah, I totally got to do that. And one of the things they wanted me to do is go ahead and show you the unboxing. So this here is the projector that they sent me out to me. And so it's a 1080p full HG protect projector here. So let's see what's inside this. Is there anything else in here? No. Let's see what's in here. So, oh, there it is. There is a portable projector screen. It's in a, just in this bag here. Looks like you just sort of hang it up. So, okay. So it's, so we got a projector screen. I'll pull that out later. So the company's Ven Ven Kyle. Oh, I think uh, Russ told me about that from RV or TV. I think he had one like this. So this is a hundred inch projector screen. That's a pretty good size. Let's see what else we got here. So there's our projector. Here it looks like our connector cable. Let's pull this out and take a peek at what the projector looks like. <laughs> this looks like a pretty decent projector. So it'll be fun to go ahead and set it up. Uh, what's this? This is must be to clean the lenses and stuff on it that comes in it as well. Little instruction manual, a user manual, the power cable. Yep. Uh, looks like HDMI, so you can hook it from a laptop if you wanted to, and a remote. So you can power it by remote here. These little guys. Just some screws, I guess. <laughs> That's all she wrote. So my plan for today is to go check out Badger Mountain. It's a hiking trail and not too far from here. And there's a whole preserve there. So I'm going to go there and do that today as I'm heading out tomorrow to get out to Spokane. Uh, there's work out there. And so when I get out there, I'll show you how I get work and everything. And on the way, there was a couple of places I want to stop and see. Time to roll out in the little white car here, guys. Let's go over to Badger Mountain. Turn left onto Columbia Park Trail. Take the next left onto Columbia Park Trail. Now I gotta find the actual trailhead, which I think is up here. Yeah, I think this is it right here. Let's go up there and watch the sunset and then come on back down. So this doesn't look like much of a mountain to be. Normally out west here, we call these hills, but since I'm in flat land on the mesa, the, well, the plateau, I should call it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna call this a mountain. <laughs> Anyways, it's gonna give me some exercise. Looks like this trail is pretty busy. Well guys, this trail is kind of kicking my butt already. <laughs> Just a year ago, <laughs> pre-COVID, I was uh, having no problem hiking up to the peak of <sighs> Mount Capitan in San Diego. One of the hardest trails there. And now today, I'm huffing and puffing up a big hill. <laughs> Still got a ways to go here though. Wish me luck. 
really close to near the peak now. Done about 800 feet, three quarters of a mile. So we got another two, 300 feet to the top here, and then, and then uh, I'll have uh, reached the peak, and it'll all be downhill from there. Whoo! <laughs> all the elevation in the first few hundred feet well that's all she wrote that's the end of the trail up here looks like there's a storm coming in over there and the wind's really picking up you guys can probably hear that but we get a good view of the columbia basin here but it doesn't look like I'm gonna get a sunset that's gonna to amount to anything so I think I'll just probably head back way down you know a lot of work for a view of some houses I'm getting pretty close to being back down as you see here you can see the parking lot down there where I'm parked at as the old saying goes it's all downhill from here all right guys we're back down off the mountain there and past the park get heading over into the car and drive on back to the RV. I think I'm gonna make a stop and pick myself up a Pop Murphy's Pizza. They're like take and bake. I really only ever seen them in Washington, but I absolutely love their pizza. This here is one of Papa Murphy's cowboy pizzas. And this in their, uh, their Chicago style, I've always loved. So these are take and bake pizzas only. So they don't cook them in the re restaurant. You show up and you have them make them right there and then you take them home and bake them. Dang, I love these pizzas. Uh, I wish Papa Murphy's was everywhere. Not Papa John's guys, Papa Murphy's. It's a different brand. I wish they were everywhere. And if you're ever in Washington state, it's the only place that I've seen them in a long time. I'd seen a few elsewhere, but I would say that was at least five years ago, the last time I saw one that wasn't in Washington. But if you get into Washington, Tri-City, Spokane, Vancouver, I've seen them all three of those places. I'm assuming they're probably in Seattle area too. Their pizzas are awesome. And they had a special on the cowboy pizza. That's weird. I'm plugged in and everything in this RV and the battery's low. I wonder if the built-in charger's having a problem. I'm gonna go and use my battery charger on it. All right, got my light going. Let's go ahead and kneel on that. So I already got it in here. I was using this guy here when I was charging on the roadside, when I was charging the battery with the generator because whatever juice the generator sent in was pretty low. And so it just wasn't working that great to just try to have the trickle charge going. This does 15 amps. It's not awesome, but fast or anything, but it's better than that trickle charger. Well, this thing is saying there's 13 volts on that. I think that voltage reader is malfunctioning maybe. Let's... turn it on and see what it says the smart charger. this is a smart charger too so it won't overcharge it we'll see what's going on there guys Ooh, that lights bright that's a little better less blinded <laughs> uh oh a ghost just opened open the door for me here What I was about to say and get started over here was this oven here, for some reason the igniter, the little clicker igniter here, doesn't really start this guy. So I gotta deal with this. So put it on, pile it on first. And then I'll get in here and try to light this guy. There we 
ago. We turned that on, you can't see it anymore. <laughs> but let's back this off here. Let's turn this up to pre-heat temperatures. Turn this back off and see if we can watch it flare up. There we go. <laughs> so we got it lit and I didn't blow anything up. <laughs> the controller here is starting to show that the uh, battery voltage is higher now too. I don't really know what was going on there. Can you believe I'd already busted my <laughs> pizza stone in half when I went when I was feeling sick and I went and uh, drove to get propane. I cracked this thing, but it still works. It's you need one of these with the gas oven for your pizzas to cook even or a lot of stuff even. I noticed uh, back in the day when I tried to cook something in the oven on one of these gas ovens without one of these, uh, you know, one of these pizza stones. It didn't go so well, guys. Uh, it, w it would like burn. There would be uneven cooking and it would burn and stuff. So these cowboy pizzas are basically a combo pizza minus the peppers and onion. I heard somebody once explain it as, as it's, it's a combo pizza with only the good stuff. <laughs> so the pizza's in there on the, on the uh, pizza rock deal and pizza stone. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see it about 12 to 18 minutes there look how good that pizza looks I'm gonna cut it up and get to grubbing get out there connect with people live your big story and make sure you do something every single day to reduce world suck peace guys <laughs>